Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and being here today. I know some of you are just logging in, um, but we have a full packed uh, meeting today, so I want to get us started promptly. Uh, my name is Devin Bella, and I'm a co-founder and organizing member of Art and Climate Action. And if you're just joining us for the first time, Art and Climate Action is a California-based collective of arts professionals advocating for sustainability in the art sector. And we host a community meeting like this every first Friday of the month. Our core group of members also meet weekly on a number of activities, including carbon audits, research and programming. So if you're interested in learning more or getting involved, please let us know and I will put our information into the chat momentarily. Um, our community meeting today is focused on an initiative recently launched by Artists Commit called the Climate Impact Report. And we are absolutely thrilled to have here with us Artists Commit founding members, Robin F. Williams, a Brooklyn-based painter, and DeVille Cohen, a non-disciplinary artist also based in Brooklyn. Robin and DeVille will be providing an introduction to Artists Commit and a special primer on how to climate impact report. Um, and before I hand it over to them, I just wanna quickly remark on their achievement for taking something so nuanced and complex like carbon emissions and waste from an exhibition and turning it into a live shareable document where the main intent is discussing outcomes and taking future courses of action and sharing that information with others, inspiring them to do the same. So kudos to you. And on behalf of ACA, thank you for being here. Um, I also wanna share our appreciation for Laura Lupton of Galleries Commit for helping us coordinate this meeting. And I have a few details and requests as we get started. Um, first, in the spirit of sharing, uh, we are asking everyone to enter their name into the chat, followed by something new you have learned about sustainability or perhaps a change you've made recently to reduce your climate impact or environmental footprint. It can be anything like a fun fact or a link, something big or small. And if you don't have anything now, that's okay too. Um, I'm sure you will later or within the next 30 minutes. Um, we will, second, we'll be recording the meeting today and likely posting a version of it online. So uh, we ask that you please mute yourselves throughout the presentation. But by all means, if you have any questions or comments along the way, please pop them into the chat and or raise your virtual hand at the end. Um, and also, if you'd like to turn off your video, now would be a good time to do so. And lastly, our meeting this morning will be exactly 30 minutes, um, or at least that's what we're going for. Uh, we have about 23 minutes for the climate impact report presentation, followed by seven to 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. And in case you can't make it to the end, I will share minutes with everyone who is attending, and I will include a link to register for our next community meeting on March 4th. Um, so thank you again all for being here and I'm delighted to welcome Robin and DeVille to the Zoom floor. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Robin F. Williams. Um, I'm a uh, founding member of Artists Commit uh, and I'd like to acknowledge um, that I'm in Brooklyn, the unceded ancestral land of the Lenape and Canarsie people. Um, I'm going to um, run through the agenda here quickly. Just uh, this slideshow consists of an artist commit introduction. Then we're gonna move to a how-to um, on our climate impact reports. And then we'll have a, a short Q&A as Devin mentioned. Uh, before we get started, I'd love to get a sense of who's in the meeting using the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. You should be able to choose an emoji to give me. If you're um, actively thinking about a report for an upcoming project, can you just give me maybe uh, the celebration icon? And if you don't have an immediate project in mind, you can, um, but you potentially have one in mind for the future, you can give me a heart icon. Great. All right. So thank you for responding there. Um, 
So Artist Commit emerged in 2021 as a group of artists signed on to committing to a climate conscious future for NYC galleries. And this was a letter written by uh, New York City gallery workers and published by Galleries Commit. While Galleries Commit is focused on providing uh, gallery workers with tools to advocate for a climate conscious, equitable and resilient future, as artists, we wanted to take actions that focused on the impact of the work we make and how it travels through the art world. These dialogues have always been interconnected um, and building on each other. In addition to Galleries Commit and Artists Commit being sisters, sister organizations, we are a member of the Visual Arts Pact along with um, Art and Climate Action. When we formed Artists Commit, one of the first questions we asked ourselves was, how can artists help catalyze change? With Galleries Commit, um, we saw how strong the impact of an artist signing on could be for their gallery to also sign. Uh, simultaneously, uh, galleries started taking action based on single artist exhibitions. Um, and they were choosing to do this with artists they knew shared an interest in climate action, not necessarily climate themed work, but artists they knew would be excited to find ways to make their actual exhibition and production more climate conscious. So this proved to be a great space to experiment, to practice conversations um, and learn more about what works and what doesn't for specific galleries or artists needs. That led us to thinking about how to leverage an artist exhibition as a catalyst for a presenting partner and artist to engage in a dialogue about the climate impact of the exhibition, which eventually evolved into our climate impact reports that we launched last fall. Um, so the first batch of reports were all artists who've been involved in Artists Commit from the beginning, including myself and DeVille. Um, they reflect on a range of both spaces and artist uh, practices. Um, some were artist initiated, others were space initiated, and they focused on different areas of the project in varying depth based on both the capacity and interests of the project team. However, a common thread for all of them is that they were dialogue driven and deeply collaborative. Working on them in tandem was great. We were able to support each other with questions, build templates together uh, and share lessons about what, we, uh, what was working and how we were approaching different areas of the report. We eventually decided to use a similar template uh, and you'll see that represented in each of the reports. But the reports in general are not didactic um, and can take different forms based on what the team working on comes up with. The uh, process of producing reports uh, is mainly intended to provide a framework for dialogue and promote a practice of transparency and information sharing, both within the project team as well as sharing with the art sector at large. A report can be entirely artist generated. It can fit into uh, broader existing climate initiatives an institution may be doing, or it can serve as a kind of testing ground for some of the actions that a space or artists are thinking about exploring and want a space to experiment to see what works. Um, the climate impact reports are designed to allow for flexibility and to adapt to each project team's needs. That said, ideally a report addresses four key areas, which we're gonna go over now. Uh, those areas are cutting emissions, eliminating waste, supporting people and promoting collective action. For anyone familiar with Galleries Commit, you'll recognize these from the Gallery Climate Action Plan. Uh, the full plan and the climate impact report complement each other well because um, we can use the exhibition model to become familiar with the action areas. Um, there's going to be a lot of info on today's presentation, but you can also find that info on the website at artistscommit.com slash reports. Um, there's a how-to page there and there will be a recording of the how-to video there as well. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to DeVille to discuss that first step. Thank you, Robin. And I'm DeVille Cohen, also a founding member of Artists Commit. And I'm also calling from Brooklyn, traditional territory of the Lenape and Kanazi people. 
So next we are going to work through each of the four core action area to see what it might look like in a report. And we're going to talk about some tools and resources to help you do it. So to start, cutting emission. We know now from existing reports and projects that some of the most common high carbon emission area are one, project travel, especially flights, artwork shipping, again, especially air freight, and energy use. Building energy, great opportunity for the presenting partners to learn about their building carbon emission, which is often one of the biggest footprints. Project related, project related energy use. Even if you can't access the building records, understanding the energy use of an AV equipment, web-based component, or energy intensive fabrication process. Once, once you do this, if you want to go even further, you might consider some other areas. Visitor travel, you can track zip codes, food, especially if you host events that serve meat or things like imported wine, supply order, material shipping. Keep record of where your materials and supplies are coming from. Purchase in person, delivered, order online, or however otherwise they came to your project venue. How to calculate carbon emission. Here are three methods for calculation carbon emission. First one is to use the Gallery Climate Coalition Carbon Calculator. It's simple to use, free, and contributes to shared effort by the visual art sector. Or you can contact us at artistcommit at gmail.com for Excel-based spreadsheet calculation created by art for Ecos. You can control and save your data internally on your own spreadsheet, and you can receive pro bono support from art to acres when you're making a donation to Gallery Commit and Art and Acres Land Conservation Project. Third, and probably the most thorough way to make sure all emissions are counted is to hire a consultant for a third party verified carbon audit. Other calculation tools are Julia's Bicycle, EPA, Barclay Cool Climate Calculator. These are all simple tools to use basic electricity and travel emissions. All of the reports made so far use the GCC calculator. So we are sharing a screenshot here so you might look like, see what this might look like in the report. For the three big areas to track, for flight, for travel, origin and destination, which class, for air freight, origin destination, enter the weight. You can find this on your shipping invoice by asking your shipper, or if they don't have the info, you can estimate energy. Pull the kilo hours from your utility bills from Con Edison or National Grid or whatever, it will list the kilo hours there. If you don't have access to the bill, you can estimate average emission per square footage in your area. There are resources online for this. Or you can track project related energy by looking at the equipment tax spec and converting to wattage into kilo hours. And uh, calculating expect hours the equipment will be in use. But of course, the point of calculating is to reduce. So um, here are some ideas for reducing carbon in the main three areas. First, for travel, opt for zero carbon option like electric cars, buses, and trains powered by green energy. Opt for trains over flights. Avoid unnecessary flights. There is no known way to make air travel carbon friendly. And when taking flights, opt for direct route. Avoid first class and minimize luggage. For shipping, ask your shipping vendor for a zero or low carbon freight option. Ask your insurance provider to cover sea freight. Opt for C over L. Consolidate work, use reusable crates, reduce the weight of crates. For electricity, adopt the Bizot Group climate standard. These are relaxed climate standards for loan works that are still safe for the work. Use green energy source, use energy efficient electronics. And back to you, Robin. Thanks, Deville. Um, all right, so uh, item number two is eliminate waste. Uh, number one way to eliminate waste is just to plan ahead. It's the only thing we have on this slide. Waste makes waste. Uh, so plan ahead to both eliminate preventable waste and to give yourself time needed to make a plan for the destination of waste that could have an afterlife if properly accounted for. 
Uh, for these reports, we uh, we focused on waste transparency. So looking at our own material and what's happened to it. Um, here's an example of an upcoming report for a Hauser and Worth exhibition um, that we'll be releasing next week. Categories include um, reuse. So um, obviously reused for the same purpose as the original use, uh, repurposed, so, so sold or donated or repurposed internally uh, for some other use. Uh, storage uh, is acknowledging, like it's good to acknowledge if something is going to end up sitting in storage facility, like sitting in a storage facility, occurring resources, um, things like infrastructure and climate control. And then uh, refuse. So this is just, again, planning ahead and seeing if you can uh, use a more sustainable option or not use it at all. Um, so some tools to support this. Um, we've got um, a Google Sheet template you can use on artistcommit.com. Um, so you can make a material afterlife report. Um, this is just a, screen sh a screenshot of additional resources for material and waste in the Climate Action Database on our website. Um, there's a lot of great resources there, and I'll just point out a couple of the resources you can find there regarding material use. So barter.art is a resource sharing tool for the art world where you can source or offload things uh, we commonly use for exhibitions like AV equipment, pedestals, crates, or frames to help promote circular material use. Um, and then Key Culture, Waste and Materials Keybook is just another great resource for uh, more sustainable material choices. Uh, Stitch Sustainability Tools in Cultural Heritage is a material carbon calculator. So say for instance, you're trying to decide between a variety of packing materials, you can kind of plug them in here and see which one um, is actually gonna be the most uh, sustainable for you. Um, and now I'm gonna pass it back to DeVille for item number three. Support people, the third item. Why is this part of CIR? Reports are created by people on your team. The Getty Institute is doing super interesting research on how individuals working on projects all share an interest in climate action. The number one obstacle is not feeling supported or permission to take action. The first step is to acknowledge that making a climate impact report is a valuable way to spend work time. The second step is to make sure people actually granted the time and space to do that. This is an obvious thing, but for us, it also go further than that. We know that climate crises intersect with racial, economic, labor, and other forms of structural injustice in both its root causes and direct effect. Data on this is undeniable. The mindset and system that overextend our team's resource are the same system and mindsets that foster overextraction of our environment. Calculating, cultivating a culture of caretaking instead of extraction is necessary for the paradigm shift we need to slow the climate crisis. We can practice this culture of caretaking every day within our project team. That means ensuring our team is compensated fairly, has reasonable working hours, has access to healthcare, mental healthcare, family care, and that, that, that we work in an environment free of racism, harassment, and other forms of wage or labor or gender inequality. This can also mean looking to take action beyond our team to create more supportive external communities. We consider this a necessary part of our climate action. We cannot expect our team to come up with creative solutions to the climate crisis if they are facing more immediate crisis when going back home, like racism, poverty, or lack of access to safe environment. We are working out to create some pathway for action around supporting people. There is still work to be done internally within Artists Commit and in conversation with other partners. But for now, the framework that this takes in the report is to talk about it with your team, present it as part of the climate report and ask what they need to feel supported and acknowledged. Robin, back to you. Great. Thanks to Bill. So the uh, fourth item is collective action. 
Um, we include collective action out of acknowledgement that this has to be framed as a movement happening throughout our sector and that framing things individualistically or putting value on being the first, the best, uh, or the leader is more harmful than framing something uh, as participating in a community that welcomes and requires the participation of others in the sector. Uh, the first pathway to action we provide for this is doing the climate impact report and collaborating with your team in the process and then sharing it with the sector. Uh, in addition to sharing a climate impact report at artistcommit.com, you can uh, ask project partners and collaborators about their climate policies, commitments, or priorities. You can uh, learn from what other projects have done, connect with other institutions or artists to ask for advice, acknowledging them in your report. You can propose others do a report at the same time or uh, reach out to other organizations or local networks doing this kind of work. Uh, so as mentioned before, uh, PACT is an international coalition of organization, organizations within the visual arts uh, engaged in collaborative efforts to accelerate the sector's broad adoption of collective climate action. Galleries Commit and Artists Commit are both members of the PACT. Of course, ACA is hosting a call today um, as California-based and helping institutions do carbon audits. Uh, Art Switch has a really robust network of people working on sustainability internationally. Art to Zero is based in New York and has supported organizations in making a climate action plan and assessing carbon. Art to Acres, we've already mentioned a few times, they can provide pro bono carbon assessment support if it results in a donation to land conservation. GCC, in addition to the carbon calculator, uh, they have a great 10 step decarbonization plan, excellent resources and strong community support networks in London, Los Angeles, Berlin and Italy. Um, Key Culture provides sustainability tools for the cultural sector and hosts a Key Futures program that is a year-long membership program to support you with all things sustainability. And of course, um, there are community members from Galleries Commit and Artists Commit that are available to support with questions uh, throughout the process of doing a climate impact report. And now back to DeVille. Thank you, Robin. For all the reports done so far, mine and Robin included, the teams involved have committed to being available to mentor or advise others interested in doing a report. If you want to do one and have questions about how someone else addressed it or want to have a mentor to support you in the process, you can identify who worked on which report in the credits and which are directly. Or again, contact us at artistcommit at gmail.com so we can either support you directly or connect you with the right people. Here again is our email address to share a report that you already have in our database or for more info and support in the process. Thank you, Robin and Laura, for sharing this presentation with me. Thank you, Art and Climate Action, for having us. And I think we have a few minutes for questions. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Deville. That was really informative, and I'm really um, amazed how much you packed into uh, 20 minutes. Um, so we can open it now for questions. I'll scan the chat. Feel free to raise your virtual hand or jump in if we've got that um, awkward silent pause. Um, I am also happy to um, maybe just ask a starting question. On average, I'm curious about the um, the time that each climate impact report uh, may take, and I know it probably varies from situation um, to situation. But um, given the ones that that you that have launched this initiative, I'm just curious how much time they took. Hmm. Um, I think speak to mine, um, I would say, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how many hours were logged by the people at the gallery, but um, I think from sort of deciding to do the impact report to completing it um, was maybe about two months. Um, 
but you know we have such a wide range of uh, reports we've done so far. Some of them are at very large, like institutional museum scales. Um, mine was, you know, um, a gallery. So um, yeah, I think it's really going to depend on the the scope of of the exhibition uh, or the practice of the artist or the institution. Um, but it's I found it to be. Um, easier than it looks and less time consuming than one would imagine. But yeah, again, that's gonna be sort of a case by case basis. Great, thanks Robin. Yeah, I can also maybe speak for some of the reports that I've worked on or have seen worked on. And I think it's kind of hard to say that the report takes a certain amount of time because it's more that the report frames an approach to the project as a whole. So it's not necessarily that you're spending like a ton of time specifically on like making the report. It's, oh, because we're doing this report, then when we're making our plan for the material coming in, part of that plan is what's going to happen to it after. Or when we're having conversations with our team, part of just like our daily team conversation is like a quick five minute check in at the beginning of a call to see how people are feeling and what they need to feel supported. Um, so it's more of like it dictates the way that you spend your day every day working on the project more so than like there were six hours that were like dedicated specifically to doing this part of it um, it's like small moments that are integrated into a daily practice wonderful we have um a question or comment from bosco hernandez if you want to jump hi. in hi hi i'm bosco hernandez my pronouns are he him and um i'm in san francisco and I love everything that you've uh, been doing. It's so inspiring. Uh, so thank you, first of all. And uh, another thing that I wanted to ask is, I work for a museum at SF Loma and I'm trying to, I mean, a lot of the examples that I saw are for uh, galleries. I know that MoCA is working with you all, but I'm curious, uh, one route that we're considering is, 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 does it make sense to kind of um, do some of the analysis that you're providing or could we work with some kind of way of uh, lead certification in terms of process uh, that could give some kind of badge or something that allows us to uh, compare our data with other organizations? And I wonder if you've thought about that. I'm, I'm curious to know how they compare um, and, uh, or maybe they're, they can happen simultaneously, but um, would love to know how do you bring larger organizations and um, uh, into the fold because a, a lot of the things online are kind of geared towards more uh, uh, galleries. Yeah. I'm happy to offer a little bit of information on that, Bosco. Um, thanks for, for joining us. So we've been working with a, quite a number of institutions in San Francisco. Um, we did an audit with the De Young Museum um, farther south. We're working on one with the San Jose Museum of Art, the Wattis. A number of commercial galleries as well. Um, I think we're up to eight or nine Bay Area institutions, and um, we've we've started small and collaboratively, often working on an audit of a single exhibition as sort of an entryway for then having a larger conversation within an institution. You know, once you start the process, really realizing that, as artist commit was saying, it's not as hard as it might seem, um, and then once that information is in hand. We work with these institutions um, to, to develop customized plans that make sense within California, within the Bay Area, and within the specific needs of an institution. Um, so yes, we are working with commercial spaces. We're working on individual exhibitions. We would be thrilled to do something wider in scope across an institution if you think even a department or um, a museum as a whole would be interested in doing that. Um, that sounds super exciting. As far as um, like accreditation, like a lead accreditation goes, that's there are quite a number of groups across the country that are, are formulating standards for that. Um, it doesn't exist at the moment. Um, we're really in the process of gathering information about what the art sector's impact is um, and what the qualifications would be for, for such a a credential, um, but we're hoping that that is forthcoming um, sooner rather than later, definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Jody. So we're at our, our 30 minute 
Mark. Um, I wish we had more time to kind of unpack some of these things. I mean, a lot of what you shared today really is a shift in practice, right? Or incorporating these things into your daily practice. And um, I feel like we could do a number of conversations just based on those shifts. Um, but I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I, like I said in the early um, part of the conversation, I will put the minutes together and uh, share everything in a, um, a follow-up email.